If they were worried about the legal sex workers, wouldn't they have done this in all of the counties? Why only those two counties? I don't think that they were expecting to find a legal sex worker that would be willing to go in front of the camera and refute each and every nonsense point they have made. And can is. you back this up? Yes, 110%. If we lose this ability to work legally, we will lose everything. Wow. <laughs> they sure as heck weren't ready for me. Prostitution is defined as the practice or occupation of engaging in sexual activity with someone for payment. This type of sex work has been around for a long time. In many parts of the world, this is illegal and often done underground. In the US, however, there is one state where it's allowed. In Nevada, brothels can operate in counties with less than 700,000 residents. But today, in the 2018 midterm elections, one of these counties is risking losing this privilege as they are voting on whether brothels should be banned or remain legal. Today, we are traveling to Lyon County, Nevada to spend election night with two sex workers who risk losing their jobs if brothels are to be banned. As soon as we arrive, we notice that people are talking about this. Maybe two months ago, I picked up a, a lady and she comes four times a, a month to work the ranch. Yeah. For what she's making, because there was a demand for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me interested to see how things play out though. Are we here? Don't get the outside of the house. Hey. Hi, Alex. How are you? How are you? I'm in. Um, Alice is actually recording a YouTube video. I think that's all we have for this week. Thank you so much for once again joining me for another Coffee with Alice. So good to finally meet Hello, you. same. So I'm here right now because I want to be here for the election. I live out of state and fly in here to work. It was the only option for me. I have kids, I don't want to get arrested. I don't want my work to be criminalized. I want channels through which I can work that provide me protections. And after doing a lot of research, it really came to be that the brothels here were the only option. I'm an independent contractor. I went to the sheriff's department, had a full background check. I was fingerprinted, I have a sheriff's card. I go to the doctor every week to get tested. Every month blood and every week we have a cervical swab. And we can't work unless we pass a test. All protection is used during every act. Condom for everything. Dental dam for oral sex. You know, we have panic buttons in our room. We have security on staff. We have cameras. When prostitution is illegal, girls die. They get raped. They get robbed. They suffer violence from pimps, other girls. There's not money and resources for every working girl to be able to get tested and know she's safe or access to condoms and protection. There's many girls that would be forced out to work illegally. If we lose this ability to work legally, we will lose everything. I'm Alice Little, and I am a legal sex worker at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. So today, we get to find out the results of many, many hard months of campaigning and letting people know who we are and what the legal brothels are actually about. The biggest misconception about sex workers is that we sell sex. What we do is offer intimacy, a service, much in the same way that a mental health professional provides a service to the community. A mental health professional addresses mental health needs. A legal sex worker addresses sex and intimacy needs. During that time, I essentially step into an ersatz relationship with my guest. We hold hands, we touch, we kiss, and we do a lot more than just having sex. I look at what we have done for Lyon County, the jobs we've provided, the tax dollars, the revenue, and how that's bled back into the economy. I think that it would be really incredible to see what that benefit could be for other counties. Much in the same way that we're taking tax dollars and revenue funds from medical marijuana and using that towards our schools, why don't we take the money from legalized sex work and move that forward in the community to continue to benefit and grow our communities? I guess the biggest question that at least we have is when did this petition come about and who is pushing it? So the real issue started when Dennis entered politics. Dennis was running as a libertarian for state assembly and he did not win that year. Because the county is so red, essentially he was told the only way he would be able to win is to run 
as a Republican. At this point, he had to win twice, first in the primary against James Oscarson, and then in the general election, which happens today. At that time, Jason Guinasso forms a PAC, ETAC, which stands for End Trafficking and Prostitution. And they push the petition both in the Lyon County, but also in another county too. They started a petition in Nye County. Dennis owns brothels in only two of the counties that it is legal. Interestingly enough, this group only pushed petitions in the two counties that Dennis owned brothels in. Right. So if they were worried about the legal sex workers, wouldn't they have done this in all of the counties? Why only those two counties? Are they trying to save sex workers or are they just trying to put Dennis out of business? What is the relation between the lawyer and Dennis's opponent? Jason Guinasso works for Hutchinson's law firm. And as we know, Mark Hutchinson is a close political ally for James Oscarson, right. who Dennis was running against for office. Because of that allyship, it's entirely probable right. that Jason Guinasso was asked to file this petition on behalf of Oscarson in an attempt to distract Dennis from his campaign. Jason is the one who triggered the petition in the first place. He helped them organize, he got the paperwork in place, and then pushed the issue forward. Thankfully, the Knight County petition failed to receive enough signatures, so they dropped it, entirely dropped it. But what happened in Lyon County is really unfortunate. Fearing that they would manage to get enough signatures, the commissioners offered to put an advisory question on the ballot. Nothing happens based off of the vote. It's just pretty much to measure public opinion. Right. Historically, they always go with what the popular vote Correct. says. Correct. Right. They've always gone with the popular vote. Dennis did, in fact, defeat Oscarson in the primary. Dennis passed away just a couple of weeks ago. So with Dennis now being gone, what does that mean? They are still pushing. At this point, Dennis's name is still on the ballot. He very well could win that seat posthumously. So we've been here for about two hours now at the watch party. The polls closed, what, two hours ago? Two hours ago. I'm so confident that we're going to be okay, oh, but not knowing is just kind of eating away. It's hard. It's, it's really hard. We want to know. We just want to know already. Being here now as it's happening is actually really surreal and kind of scary and seeing how close all the other elections coming through have been, um, it's really nerve wracking and I want to believe so hard that it's going to work out. Partial results! Yeah, we all have the same uh, cards dealt to us, so I don't judge anything or 